Today I'd like to talk to you about my squeeze box radio. If you have one, you'll know that Logitech has taken the servers down for this. And what that means is that you need to have a local server set up if you want to continue using it. However, if you have a local server set up, it works just fine. I will show you that. We'll try a different station. This is tune in. So as you can see, it's working fine. Um, connecting to CBC Toronto here. So we'll just mute that. But uh, so this is connected not to Logitech servers. It's connected to my server, which is on my desktop Mac Mini, which is right over there, uh, just off screen. So I'm going to put this away and I will get out the computer and we'll try to run through how you would go about installing the software because it's a little bit hard to find at the moment. Logitech's web page for this as if at least last night was 404ing, it wasn't accessible, which means that you have to go another route to find the uh, the Logitech software that you need to run on your uh, on your PC or your Mac or whatever. And uh, Raspberry Pi is actually a good choice for running a squeeze box server. The interesting thing about the server is that the server has effectively been open sourced for a long time now. It's an open source project, which means that even if Logitech isn't making this or supporting it, the server looks like it's going to have a lot of years of support left in it. It's an interesting platform. It's still worth playing with. If you've got some of the hardware, that makes it well worthwhile. But there are other alternatives if you would like to set up a new squeeze box system. There are ways you can go about doing that. So let me shut this off. I'll set up the computer and then I'll come back. We're on the computer on the Mac here, but it wouldn't really matter and we're looking at the web page or the web presence for LMS community which appears to be where Logitech Media Server is going to live at the moment. Um, so this is lms.community at github.io. I'll put a link to this site which will take you to everywhere you need to go in a few moments. So let me just talk about what's going on with this right now. So we've got LMS community. We're on the home page at the moment. Uh, first we note that they're saying the site is under heavy uh, construction while content is being traveled from the old wiki. So the old wiki, which I'll click through, is slimdevices.com. This is still run by Logitech, but since we're now, they're now 404ing on uh, my Squeezebox page, we'll just check and see if that's still the case. Right, so MySqueezebox.com is dead. So, uh, so this is still up, but I don't think we can assume that SlimDevices.com is going to stay up in the future. This was the wiki that was developed for the Squeezebox family of projects. You have hardware and whatnot. And this was always very useful if you wanted to do things around this. But the, the project has actually been sitting on GitHub for a while in terms of, um, of where the software and whatnot has been. So we'll just show you where we are. So at the top, they tell you a little bit about LMS community. Um, the forums also on, still on Slim Devices are still up. But it looks like, according to this the, um, discussion that they're bringing the community forums over here. So I think we can assume that the Slim Devices site is also going to go down completely in the near future. So we get a, big, a bit of a discussion of the Logitech Media server ecosystem, which of course predates Logitech. It was a very early attempt to um, have networked high quality audio and it was originally designed with a server player controller architecture, which is covered by this. 
So the server would run on your PC, which would have access to your music library, and you would then have a variety of different player devices which would have access to that. Some of these player devices eventually also started to have servers in them, and the player device also would likely have a controller, right, an interface that you could use. And the, originally there was a, you know, a smart um, kind of remote control. The player was a kind of neat thing that sat in, you know, it was supposed to sit in your hi-fi cabinet, and, um, and the server would run on your PC. And eventually the, the, all these things got uh, mixed together. At the moment, of course, uh, you know, in 2000, from a hardware point of view, that was a fairly complex thing to do. Now, of course, that's easy, and you can just run a Raspberry Pi with a Pi Core player on it and have all of this stuff in one device, which is one option. But I'm assuming you have a squeeze box radio that you've been using as a radio without a server for many years, and now suddenly it won't work because Logitech server which is one of the servers you can point it to, to um, has gone down. So what you would do is you would go to this web page and you say, okay, I want to get a Logitech Media Server running on my network. You'd click on Getting Started with Logitech Media Server, and it's straightforward. The current version is 8.5. There's a 9.0 that they're working on, and there's an 8.5.1 stable with the development uh, branch as well. That I have not updated to. I'm still running 8.5. Um, so, you know, if you're on Windows, you might run the 32-bit. I used to run the server on an old uh, Atom-based little, uh, little PC that uh, was convenient for that purpose. It's kind of like dog slow because it's essentially a netbook as a little sort of uh, small package. But um, worked for this purpose. So there you might run the 32-bit version if you have older hardware, but you'd probably run the 64-bit version on anything more reasonable. I've run it on Ubuntu when I had a Ubuntu machine going. I don't at the moment. I've never played with a Raspberry Pi, but I think that's probably the, one of the best uh, solutions. And there's the Raspberry Pi OS uh, version. But I run it on a Mac at the moment and uh, that gives you a Mac OS download. So you would click onto that and it will download, which it's downloaded again, the image. You can also, like, you can run a Docker image if you want. On the Mac, there is one um, issue which has to do with the security settings on the Mac, and we have this here. Sometimes Mac OS would refuse to open the installer because the authenticity of the developer can't be confirmed. If that happens to you, open the installer using a right mouse click, then open, and that will work right. It gives you the option to do it, but you've got to do it twice. This You might have to do it twice as the first time you'll still be rejected, but the second time around you should be able to launch it anyway. That's absolutely my experience, so this little note is uh, absolutely crucial if you run a run it on Mac OS. However, once it's running, it works fine. And what I'm going to do is stop again, and I'm going to open up the control panel for this so that uh, you can see how I've got it configured and installed on my machine. So what we're looking at now is the Apple system settings selection, there's a control panel on the PC, which is similar. So this is the status of my Logitech Media Server. So we can see that the server's running. I've got it set to automatically start the server when the system boots. We've got the copyright dates. Keep in mind, this is still being developed. This is version 8.4. We get some basic media tracks. At the moment, it's shadowing my iTunes library. Now, it won't play music that I've downloaded from Apple Music, but it will play music that I've ripped from my own CDs or paid for independently as tracks, right? So we can see tracks, albums, total artists, genres. I haven't built, you can build playlists in here, I haven't. The library has library information, we'll look at that because that exposes some personal information that I don't want to account. You could set it up to connect with your Logitech account, but there's no point in doing that now. Advanced we'll look at in a moment. 
and information just gives you, you know, uh, a little bit of information here, but you can see what it's running on and what plugins and whatnot are installed. So let's have a look at advanced. Um, you've got, you can open a web remote control, that's what it amounts to, it just opens a website, let, lets you control all the uh, all the squeeze box devices on your network um, and then you can go into advanced settings which we'll do in a second and then you've got log files and you've got the ability to rescan your media which you don't really have to very often so really all you have to do when you set this up right is make sure this is set make sure the server is running then you go into library which as I said I won't because um, because that exposes some personal information, but if you go into the library and you point it towards your media library, and that's it. It will then scan and it will show up on the network, and then you'll go onto your radio and select the, uh, the server from the network. It's, it's really straightforward. Um, and, uh, you don't have to do any of this sort of stuff now. So let's go into advanced. I'm going to click on advanced settings and then I'll come back once that window opens up. Here's the player. It shows you what the player is and it gives you a few settings for the, and if you have other devices on your network, which I don't, they're over here. There are also additional browser modes, clock modes, right, a variety of other things that you can change. You've got my music. You've got a variety of things that you can that you can change in terms of how it deals with music. My squeeze of Oxbot.com. Well, that doesn't work anymore, so you can forget that. iTunes. There's a variety of different kinds of uh, iTunes um, changes that you can make here. You have interface modifications that you can do. But then the most interesting thing you can do is manage plugins. And these plugins do a variety of different things that can connect to uh, a variety of different elements that you might have or network devices that you might have. So that's something that you can play with. I won't go into that in great detail. But as you can see, there's quite a lot here which you might want to, dist what you might want to install on your device. So that's interesting. In advanced, you have a variety of other things that you can do. Um, I've never looked at, you can set up password protection if you want, and that sort of thing. I have done that in the past. Just to demonstrate, I've stopped my server right now. And you'll notice that this has now popped up problem connecting. There's a problem connecting to my server. So then you can go to switch library and if you have other servers it will try to connect to them. It's now trying to commit, connect to the same one again. And that won't work because I stopped the server. So let's pop out of that. And we're going to go back to home. Right, so here we are at the home. And we'll go into settings. a bit advanced and we'll come a little farther we'll go into networking and then we're going to go into remote libraries so this sets what network you're connected to this sets remote libraries and there I have my server connected here and what you need to do to connect your server up is you say add new library and then you'll put in the numerical IP address of your Squeezebox server. You might see it without doing this, but I've never had good success without having to do this. And you'll put your server in there, and it should show up. When you start the server, I've now restarted my server. And you'll notice this looks good. And now there's a server available which it knows about. We can hit a button 
This is tune in. And we'll get the tune well, in thing. What are you listening to this for? Wait, who's talking? You know you're driving a twin. Anyhow, so it's now working. Now, I will give you a couple of warnings. Your presets and whatnot are saved on the server. Those are gone. You will need to save them on your local server again. So these buttons, whatever you had them set for, once you switch over to your local server, the, you won't have that anymore. That will be that will be lost, unfortunately, as will any sort of presets or favorites that you had set up because it's not stored locally on the radio. It's stored on the server. And that's been stored on Logitech server and that's gone. So you'll need to redo that. However, um, everything else ought to work and you have the option of now, if you haven't done it before, being able to go into my music and seeing, you know, all the music from, that shows up on your on your server popping up. So hopefully that's helpful for people who have a Squeezebox radio and have found it's not working. Install Squeezebox server. You'll find that it's a really powerful package that does a lot of interesting things. But keep in mind, it's still an architecture that's really coming out of the early 2000s. So it's, it's assuming you've got a server on your network. Logitech redesigned the, uh, the system slightly so that you could use their server instead of, uh, of yours if you wanted to and that made it made this very useful as a radio. But it's a tremendously powerful system. It can do all sorts of things and if you don't have a PC that runs on your system, a Raspberry Pi would be a good choice for a uh, for running a squeeze box server on and of course you could stick it in your hi-fi cabinet and then you would have another audio source there hope this has been useful it's nice to keep these this is very nice hardware right this was very nicely done hardware it still sounds great it's a shame not to keep it going and uh, if you got a pc that's especially one that's always on your the solution is fairly straightforward thanks for watching